Welcome back, and I hope everyone's day is going well. Today, I'm going to jump right into an update that the quantum computing company IonQ released on March 21st. IonQ Aria, newest quantum computer coming to Microsoft's Azure quantum platform. So basically, what's happening here is that IonQ signed an agreement with none other than Microsoft. Microsoft. To bring IonQ's Aria to Microsoft's Azure quantum platform. Essentially, this partnership will add IonQ's newest quantum system Aria to the cloud platform, which actually already features IonQ's prior generation of systems among the lineup of available hardware that Microsoft has for its clients. Okay, so now I want to give you guys a little bit more info on Aria. Like I mentioned, Aria is currently IonQ's most advanced, commercially available quantum computer. And since it currently has 20 algorithmic qubits, it's also the industry's most powerful quantum computer based on standard, application-oriented industry benchmarks. And the exciting part here is that through this partnership, literally anyone with an internet connection will be able to harness Aria's abilities, which is just another step further in the democratization of quantum computing, which I actually think is really important to call out here. Because up until now, quantum computers really haven't been something that was supposed to be available to the mass public. It was mainly reserved for hardcore nerds and people who were so deep in the caves of the tech industry that not even light could reach them. But here we are today, with the idea of harnessing quantum hardware through the cloud becoming much more of a realistic and tangible idea. Granted, Aria specifically is not available through the cloud just yet, as IonQ, to my knowledge, has not given any specific details as to when it's actually going to be released. But if I were to guess, I would probably say at some point this year. And the reason I believe this is, to me, I think it'd be kind of weird to announce the release of a product on the cloud, which is already incredibly scalable, only to not release your product for another one to two years. And the INQ president and CEO, Peter Chapman, stated in a recent quote, We're excited to bring INQ Aria's leading capabilities to more customers through Microsoft Azure and our expanded beta program. We believe the future of quantum computing relies on getting the power of today's systems into the hands of as many people as possible, and building our existing partnership with Microsoft is an important step along that path. So even in this quote, it's pretty obvious that Peter understands the power of scalability. By providing a product through the cloud to the public, especially through a company that's as large and influential as Microsoft, it's going to have a huge impact on INQ's profitability. And this is also going to be a huge component of INQ's reoccurring revenue that they're trying to build up. Because like an overwhelming majority of SaaS or software as a service business models, the bulk of the revenue is generated by charging anyone who wants to use the software a monthly or yearly subscription. So whether you're a multi-million dollar tech corporation or Joe Blow down the block, if you want to harness the power of quantum computing hardware through a software interface, you can. And like Peter Chapman mentioned, this whole Microsoft and INQ announcement also marks Aria's entry into an expanded beta program where select early access partners have already been using the system to solve problems in financial modeling, electric vehicle battery chemistry, and more. And currently, additional customers are beginning to leverage the hardware to explore applications ranging all the way from quantum machine learning to logistics to meet and predict supply chain issues. And to continue, Dr. Krista Sfor, a computer scientist and VP of quantum software at Microsoft, even weighed in on this matter. Azure Quantum helps customers learn, explore, and develop quantum impact with an open, unified cloud ecosystem, and with the addition of INQ's Aria, offers even more capabilities and hardware diversity. The innovators on our platform will benefit from INQ Aria's ability to execute quantum circuits with more gates, pursuing the development and exploration of larger quantum programs. And just for a bit more background on Krista, I thought it'd be interesting to show you guys an old interview of her and how she explains quantum computers and her role at Microsoft. 
and she's actually really incredibly likable. So check it out. And I came to Microsoft Research really because it was, it's really the top place to work for computer science, PhDs in industry. Uh, the people here are amazing, problems amazing, uh, and just a really fantastic place to work. So I wanted to come here to really work on um, you know, a, a set of problems and have freedom in research and, and to work with the people that were here. What are some of the challenges that you have as a computer scientist with universal quantum computers not existing and what you have to do in the meantime? As a computer scientist, we're faced with the challenge of actually building out the whole system uh, in terms of the interaction between the classical computer that controls the quantum computer the language that needs to describe that, that has to take into account both the classical instruction set and the quantum instruction set. You know, how do those systems interact? So in computer science, we're really thinking about building out the whole compiler and understanding how those controls, how the feedback loops work. Uh, how do we control the quantum computer? The universal issue is really, we have to be able to take any quantum algorithm any, any quantum circuit that we program, we need to be able to run on the quantum device, on the quantum computer, eventually universal quantum computer. And that's where building Liquid, our software architecture, is really key. Having a complete solid design flow that will allow this mapping in an automated fashion and in an efficient fashion is, uh, has a great set of challenges along that design flow. And that fun set of problems for computer scientists. So with a digital computer, I can look and see if I'm at a one or a zero. Can you look <laughs> at the state on a quantum computer? Because looking at the state, I mean, that's sure. one of the problems, isn't it? Right. So you, so you can look at the state, but there are consequences. Yeah. Uh, so naturally, in a quantum computer, it wants to remain, you know, the qubits want to be in their vacuum. They want to be isolated from the environment. The more it interacts with the environment, the more it undergoes a process wh which we call decoherence. And decoherence essentially means that the quantum system collapses back to a classical system. So instead of being on this dimmer, the dimmer will flip to either on or off if I open the box and look at the system, if I measure the system is what we say. So overall, if you look at what INQ has already achieved and what's on the horizon, I'm becoming more and more confident that they'll be a very successful company in the future. I mean, think about it. This entire announcement of INQ ARIA on Azure Quantum has already followed a ton of recent milestones for INQ. So earlier this quarter, INQ announced a partnership with Hyundai Motor to design quantum algorithms to simulate battery chemistry in electric vehicles. INQ has also previously announced collaborations with GE Research to tackle risk mitigation and even with Goldman Sachs on Monte Carlo simulations for complex financial models and applications. So I'm not going to drag the video out longer than it needs to be. That was the update and I'm really looking forward to see when ARIA will actually be released and what's to come next for INQ. Thanks as always guys and I'll catch you next time.